Hey, what's up everyone? In today's video, we'll be looking at an interesting lock. This is the Secure MME K64 EVO. It's a dimp lock with a reverse sidebar mechanism. So let's take a look what's inside. Here we have our key with 10 cuts for, uh, sorry, 11 cuts for uh, 11 pins and a slider track to accommodate for four sliders is reversible we have our housing that uh, has a groove for the reverse sidebar which is uh, as you can see square shape it's not uh, like oval like you can see in uh, other sidebar locks that's important here is our plug uh, so as you can see there's 11 chambers for 11 pins and this chamber is kind of interesting uh, because it uh, houses sort of a double keeping i will show it to you in a minute here are some chambers for the sliders for the sidebar and nothing else from here profile looks like this nothing too difficult there is some wording uh, though but it's not too aggressive okay let's take a look at these pins so most of the key pins look like this there's nothing interesting about them uh, this one is kind of cool that's the double key pin i told you about uh, so it actually serves the key pin for chamber uh, three on the right and two on the left so it's kind of a double keeping that goes into both rows and that's pretty much it for drivers we have some standards and spools so that's pretty much the uninteresting stuff out of the way and we can talk about the interesting stuff which is the reverse sidebar so first of all i'd like to show you what does it look like when it's installed so we'll do a little cut here okay so this is our lock uh, with the key inserted so let me just slowly extract it and now you can see that the sidebar is being constantly pushed towards the plug because there are these half crescent things attached to springs and they are doing the downward force so the sidebar constantly wants to sink into the uh, plug and since this uh, leftmost slider is a uh, zero lift or uh, it's already set you can see that the sidebar is already tilted towards the left side so this creates an uneven uh, surface and uh, as i will demonstrate uh, later this top part is not completely square which creates further problems when you apply tension it actually a little bit creates more downward force so that the sliders can remain in their places now when i insert the key sliders should start moving and the sidebar sinks by itself into the plug so a reverse sidebar lock actually wants or requires you to set all the elements at the same time otherwise it simply won't hold them uh, in place at least in theory so let's jump back to the exploded view and talk about why doesn't it work in this particular lock all right so now that you uh, saw what does it look like how does it work uh, we can talk about why does it not work that good in this particular lock so in order for a reverse sidebar to be effective uh, and to function properly there are two conditions that need to be met first one the sidebar itself and the cutout need to be square shaped right so this one is square shaped 
but if you take a look at the sidebar and the contact point or the cross section you can see that uh, sorry need to it be a difficult focus but yeah you can see that it's definitely not square shaped so that's mistake number one because as soon as you put some tension on this sidebar it actually sinks against the locking elements against the sliders and it gives you some feedback and it gives you an opportunity to uh, increase this feedback and uh, to keep the elements in place so that's mistake number one and the second condition for a reverse sidebar uh, in order for it to be effective is that the springs on the uh, that are pushing the sidebar in need to be weaker than the springs that are pushing the sliders back into their original positions and that's because if it wasn't the case uh, you would simply lift all the sliders and they would stay in their positions because this spring force would simply hold them in place and unfortunately this is not the case in this lock as well even if those uh, springs look uh, weaker i mean these ones the spring force for some reason is still stronger on the on the sidebar so what does it mean is that the sliders basically stay in place as soon as you set them i think it also has something to do with the geometry and with the fact that this one this slider is actually a zero lift so it's basically set from the get-go and the sidebar tilts and it sinks into the lock so it's sort of asymmetrical and then the forces are distributed unevenly throughout the sliders and they basically stay in place when you set them so that's pretty unfortunate uh, but it's something we can abuse as uh, as speakers right so what i did as you will see in the video is that i first set slider number two with this fork style pick without any tension stayed in place because uh, why not because the spring force of the sidebar is actually stronger than this one and uh, then i set sliders one and three with this tool it's a multi-pick uh, uh, pin tensioner i don't know what's the name but they come in pack of four sp400 klein okay so basically i stuck it in and sort of just uh, rotated it until I heard the sidebar sink into the lock and then it was just a matter of setting the remaining pins uh, so I used this multi pick uh, dimple pick number five and this smoky Z style tensioner all right so uh, let me just give you a close-up on these sliders but as you can see they do not have any old gates and that's a shame as well I already showed you this sidebar and uh, these are actually the pieces that push the sidebar constantly into the plug so yeah good idea but the execution unfortunately is not that good uh, because none of the conditions for a, an effective reverse sidebar were met uh, if they were this lock would be a lot harder to pick maybe almost impossible without a specialized tool but uh, yeah this did not work out so that's that's pretty much it all right so let's get this lock picked now all right here we go okay works now we can start right away by setting uh, slider number two without any tension and it just stays in place so that's definitely something that should not happen but it does and now we will try to set sliders one and three at the same time so I need to jam this Maybe enough. I think it's 
not deep enough. Okay. Oh, I felt a little corrotation. So we can switch to some flex and start working on the left side. I think on one, two, three is binding. Click there, five. Click there. One is good. Two, three, four, five. Okay, five is good. Super deep fall set. I think my flag got stuck. Okay, I unstuck it somehow. And now six is binding. Some nice counter rotation. Okay. There we go, the lock is picked, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I think we can go ahead and cut it. So it will definitely take longer than the pick itself, but I will try to make this as fast as possible. So this one actually has a surprisingly tough circlip, so I need to use both of these benches. Okay. Oh, come on, it was already out. Okay, so once again. Oops, almost out of the frame. <laughs> Sorry for this. I had some problems with this clip. Okay, that should be all right. Perfect. All right. And of course, I don't have a follower. I prepared everything, but not the follower, which is very sad. Okay. So, if I remember correctly, I should rotate it like this, and then it should be on the left side. So, this should work right. And actually, I might take this. start getting it like this right actually no let's, let's do it like this so we will put the left side on uh, on top and the right side on bottom left stop so this is the double pin This is left number three. Shine now, wait a second. This is a left four, yeah. That makes sense. Right four. Left five. five left six that should be good now these sliders and this sidebar that will be a bit annoying I think I'm pretty sure this won't be easy okay let me think how to deal with this should I know that the sliders won't go out by themselves? It needs to be key okay, has to be out, and I think I will have to even oh yeah, I will have to remove those those 
things that hold the sidebar in place. It would be like super annoying. Can I? Can I somehow? That would be really good. Okay, that's number one. Thrown out, buddy. Two. This is four. And this is two. I already can see that two doesn't want to go out. I can already sense some problems. Okay, never mind. So let's try to remove these wrongs or whatever they are. Okay, there's the first one. went well and there's a super small spring and the other one should go well as well right okay it's half out right the spring is here super tiny but I have it perfect and the sidebar is just this piece okay now there should not be any problems with this guy come on now <laughs> number three okay and now there's the springs we still have the drivers to get, so hopefully that will go smoothly. Okay, now it will be like vice versa, right? So six pins are on the right side now, so. Right side so goes up, left goes down. Left down, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this can go here, left, goes down, right, up, left, down, right, up, left, down, right, up, perfect, now only the springs remain, and that will be it my friends pretty nice springs I have to say wouldn't expect such nice springs here but yeah they they look really good still have some left Almost done here. Okay, that's pretty much it. I will put in put it in order, but for now I will just give you a close up. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed picking this lock. And see you next time with the next video. Bye.